All right, thank you all for joining today's webinar. I'm gonna go ahead and give just about another minute or so for the rest of our attendees to join and we'll be starting shortly. Thanks. All right, hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, How to Migrate to API version 4.0. Thanks for joining us as we dive into the improvements, changes, and logistics of this new API to ensure a smooth migration for all of you. My name is Ariana Tadero, and I'm a product marketing manager here at Crunchbase and for today I'll be your moderator. I'd also like to introduce you to your speaker today, our customer success manager, Charlie Liu. Charlie is an integral part of Crunchbase's effort to put our customers first. Understanding the product deeply and using that expertise to help the more than 100 accounts that he manages. Now before we get started, I'd like to remind you that there will be time at the end for Q&A. So please at any time during the presentation, pop your questions in the Q&A window at the bottom of the screen and we'll get to it at the end of the webinar. If we don't get to your question during today's session, we'll follow up after the webinar personally to ensure that your question is addressed. I'd also like to remind you that the full webinar recording and slides will be sent out to all registrants within 24 hours. So with that, I'll go ahead and hand it over to Charlie. Thanks so much. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, good morning, good evening to everybody. Um, let's just get started on how to migrate to API version 4.0. Uh, so some, uh, just a quick overview of what we're going to cover today. Um, we will be going over the migration milestones, how to use API version 4.0, key changes and reminders, as well as migration resources. So API v4 at a glance. Uh, at a high level, I want to review the key benefits API v4 brings to your teams. Uh, so let's dig in. So the three things that I want to cover um, are searching and filtering, so tailoring, your search to view only the data you're looking for, reliability and speed, being able to leverage increased reliability and speeds up to 10 times faster than the previous API, as well as data parity, access additional data in parity with the CSV. Migration milestones. So those are the key dates that you need to keep in mind. So as you are all aware, April 30th was the initial launch of API version 4.0, um, and we announced that API version 3.1 end of life will be on October 30th. At that point, support ends for the API version 3.1, but functionality will continue to aid migration. Um, on January 29th of 2021 will be the sunset date for version 3.1 and all migrations to API version 4.0 will be complete. Um, just to add on to what Ariana said prior, we'll be sending out notifications throughout to keep you up to date. So no need to write this down. Uh, we will be sending out all this communication uh, via email after the webinar. So how to use the new version for Parno API. The most common use cases we come across are searching for items of interest, enriching specific data, and ingesting all Crunchbase data. Uh, in the first example, we're going to cover searching for items of interest. Um, we'll be going over these examples, two of them in Swagger Hub, which is our API reference tool, as well as Postman, which is an API utility development application. For the first example we're going to cover, we're going to look for searching for items of interest. The goal is to discover organizations, investors, uh, et cetera, of interest by including search and filter criteria within the body of an API request. Um, this, for example, can help founders and investors find the next big deal, better tailor results for researchers, and unlocking prospecting for sales, just to name a few. Um, in this example, we're going to be looking at our search API, 
which will help us retrieve information from multiple entities, specify which data fields are returned, and also find entities that match searching criteria. The, I think one thing to include is the overall theme of the new version 4.0 is that we really want you guys to tailor your search results, your queries, to search for everything that you want and return only the fields that you're looking for. So going into our first example, um, the format we're going to be using for this call is the searches principle call. And to make this request, you're going to be using our search API. You must provide the following and in no particular order, a user key um, and a request body that contains the field IDs and query. You can also further customize the API response for your search by including an order in the body request to sort the result based on a particular field or including or including a limit in the body request to limit how many results are returned per page. Um, one thing to note, the reason why we're using a principal search endpoint is so that we can search across both the organization and person profiles as investors can be both. To jump right into our first example, we're going to be looking at biotech companies with a number of employees between 101 and 500 using a post call. Um, some tips and tricks, each search filter within query are bound together via AND, and multiple search calls should be used for OR. If a limit is left unspecified, the search API will return 1,000 items per page. Um, on each of our examples, we will have additional resources down below so you can get a better look and in-depth information on the examples as well as where you can actually test the API call itself. So to jump right in, I'm going to switch screens to Swagger Hub on my second tab, and we're going to go into the first example. So this is Swagger Hub, which is our API utility uh, website that we use for testing certain endpoints as well as finding out uh, example calls as well as the schema. Um, for this example, I've already pre-authorized my user key here, and I will go into the first post search organizations call to take a look at um, the biotech companies with the number of employees between 100 and 250. So for this one, I already clicked try it out, but in case you didn't, weren't aware or not familiar, you can click try it out. And because my API key is already in there, I can then just view the examples. As we continue to build on the, on the API, we will continue to add more and more examples. So this, this will not be the only two you'll see in the future. Um, and these will also give you a better idea of when you are potentially playing with the API to kind of give you some inspiration on how to create more crafty API calls. So looking, looking at this example here, we have the example body request that we're parsing. So we're gonna be returning identifiers, categories, location identifiers, short description, and rank or company. We've ordered them by the field ID rank or company sorted by ascending. And then this is our query, uh, which is just including the number of employees, which includes the values uh, 101 and 250. And the last part of the query, this is our categories in which with the operator ID includes. And we're also gonna be looking at the values. Uh, this is our UUID for biotech companies and we're limiting it to 50 results. So once this looks good, I'll click execute. And as you can see, it's loading. Um, in our responses, we now have the, the curl response uh, for this API call, as well as the request URL. And if we scroll down to our 200 response, you can see that we have 864 results that match the above query that we just passed. So if you wanted to look through all, obviously we've limited to this to 50. If you wanted to go past the 50, you would need to paginate through the results. Um, and again, we'll get to an example of that later down the line. But here you can just see all the results that were returned. Um, Moderna Therapeutics, the, the description, the entity ID, the permalink UID in the category as well. Scrolling down, we have our response headers as well as um, the response, different response codes for our API call. So for example, if we had a bad request, we would see the response here as well as the example value in the schema. One thing I did want to mention that has come that I've come across a lot working with my various customers is typically they want to find out which fields, where you can find which fields can be parsed and which can be searchable. So in order to see that, you can go into the schema. And if you scroll into the entities here, you can see all the different uh, values that can be that can be in the field IDs. So for that example, we have company type, which is searchable, and these are the possible values for a company type for for profit and nonprofit. As you can see, the list goes on and on. And each uh, API call that we have will have this 200 response example value schema that you can take a look at. Uh, switching back to our slide deck, 
Um, and into our next example. So the next example we're going to cover is enriching specific data. Here we'll cover two uh, examples, one of them again in Swagger Hub and then the other one in Postman. So for this call, we're going to look at enriching specific data. We're going to be trying to fetch only the data you're looking for to optimize your workflow. So in the entity lookup API, we're only requesting information for a single specific entity. You will also need to specify which data fields and relationships are returned versus in the search API, you're retrieving information for multiple entities and you're going to be specifying which data fields are also returned. This is the format of how our entity lookup API works. So it's entities, organizations, and then the entity ID. To make a request using our entity lookup API, you must provide the following. One, a user key, and two, an entity ID, which can either be the UID or the permalink. For example, Crunchbase would be the entity for Crunchbase. You can also ask for additional data fields and relationships in the response by adding the field IDs and or card IDs parameters to the request. And one thing to note, um, if you're familiar with the version 3.1 API, there has been a URL change, which I'll cover uh, in a later slide. So let's just jump right into our first example. Um, the example here is we're trying to retrieve the desired data fields and relationships for Airbnb using a get call. Um, some tips and tricks. When you're calling a specific card, uh, the max items it can return is 100 results. Uh, to get more results, you'll need to paginate through uh, the results using the lookup API endpoint for a single card. And also be sure to specify the data fields and relationships in the request, as if you do not specify any data fields or relationships in the request, uh, no data will be returned outside of just the identifier. Additional information um, for if you need to reference this API call later. So let's just jump right into the Swagger Hub example, and I will give you two different examples of how we can use our get organizations lookup call. So I'll scroll all the way down. And here we are at uh, the get entity organizations entity lookup and organization call. As you can see, I've already clicked try it out and I've tested this earlier. So in the first example, I'm only just going to search for Airbnb and I'm going to start show you the output that's returned. So if I scroll further down, obviously we have our standard curl responses and the request URL. This is the standard response we'll get if you do not pass any data fields or relationships or cards um, with the API call, you just get returned the identifier, which shows showcases Airbnb. Now let's say I wanted to make it a little bit more descriptive and return information that I'm curious about. For example, I'm interested in looking at description, the rank, the founded on, the funding total, last funding at, and also last funding type. So I can make some smart prospecting choices in the future. I will click execute again. And you can now see in my response that my data is enriched with more uh, information about Airbnb. For example, I have now have the founded on date, the rank, as well as the funding total, and the last funding type and the date that we got that, we received that funding, Airbnb received that funding. What if you were looking for something like press references or news or investors? Well, instead of adding the fields there because they don't exist, you can add the specific card. Um, so let's just remove all the field IDs here and I will look at press references to see what news press references, what news has come up for Airbnb in the past couple of weeks. And just to give you an example, I'm going to remove all the fields so that um, we only are looking at press references. So you can kind of see the clear difference between the field IDs and the card IDs. So as you can see now, we don't have any field IDs um, to modify our existing call, but we do have a new card that came up and these are the press references um, that showcase Airbnb. So for the first example, we just have the author, Amy Lewin. Uh, we have our identifiers as well as the title, which is Europe's Airbnb competitor was on track for unicorn status, then COVID-19 struck. Um, additional information down below, we'll have the URL to post it on the publisher. So all these informations are come standard when you put in the card for the entity lookup. If you were to go further down, and again, I shared this previous, in the 200 responses, you can actually see the example value in the schema. If you go into the schema of the 200 response, you can see all the various cards that you have access to. So for example, in this previous example, I just called the press references. And if you were to scroll a little bit deeper, you can see all the different uh, 
uh, information on the press references uh, card. If you wanted to look at the different field IDs and the properties there, you can go into the organizations. And again, you would see all the different uh, field IDs that you're able to add and whether or not they're searchable um, via this method. So again, I had found it on and rank and description. These are all different fields that um, can modify this get call here. Going back to our slide deck and into our next example. So our next example, we're going to look at retrieving the desired data fields for six specific investors that invested in Crunchbase using a post call. Again, the same tips and tricks I shared earlier, each search filter within query are bound together via and, and multiple search calls should be used for or. And if there's limit is left unspecified, the search API will return 1,000 items per page. So go, to go into this example, I'm gonna go into Postman and showcase this principal search call that we're going to use to enrich multiple entities um, of our investors. So again, this is a standard layout. We have our field IDs, we have our order, and we have our query. In the top of the field IDs, I have all the fields that I'm looking to, to retrieve. I'm ordering them by the number of exits, sorted by ascending, as well as a query to showcase the six specific in, uh, entities that I'm looking for. So these are the UIDs of six investors of Crunchbase. And then I also have the faucet IDs, and I want them to only include the investor values. So as you can see here, um, these are the six records that are returned. Um, first one being Omer's, and then you can kind of cross-reference all the different identifiers uh, or the fields that are associated um, with the results. Going back to the slide deck and into our next example, the, the last example that we're going to cover today is ingesting all Crunchbase data. Uh, so to be able to ingest data with increased ease, speed, and reliability, we want to showcase the search API and key set pagination functionality. Previously, if customers wanted to paginate uh, or start search through the whole set, they would need to essentially do a lot of post-processing after or they would have to go through the uh, CSV. So customers can now use the search a API to ingest a much larger volume of data. Um, and also key set pagination will eliminate, eliminate performance degradation so that the CSV isn't necessary. And for those of you who still want to use a mixture of both, the CSV will, be, will continue to be available for those who prefer a flat file. So in the next example, I'm going to showcase pulling down all the funding rounds after 2018 using a post call. And then I'll also showcase the pagination functionality. And just some additional tips and tricks. Um, the new API has parity with the CSV so that we can eliminate any friction between the two formats. And the new API also has additional fields in parity with Crunchbase Pro, but they exclude any partner or marketplace data. So anything with built with or sift or Bombora, the, we will not have API data. Um, we will have no API data. Uh, we have no data on the API for those they will only be in Crunchbase Pro. So let's switch back over to Postman. And now the first call we're going to look at is our funding rounds call for uh, funding rounds that were announced after 2018. So here are the field IDs that we are looking at. Here's our query uh, announced on, which is in the operator ID greater than or equal to 2018. And I also included just another query just to make it a little different, um, which adds the funded organization location and the operator includes, and this value is for San Francisco. I'm going to limit it to three because I want to showcase uh, how, how the our key set pagination functionality works. So as you can see, here is the output from our API call. We have 4,115 records. The first three are Fordrock, Span.io, as well as Coalition. So in the next call I have to showcase, I'm actually going to be using this ID as the after ID because I want to take the records after um, this UUID. So this is how you would do it. Like when you start using a key set pagination, you would just be pulling either the UUID and then either inserting a before or after ID um, in the body response to pull the records before or after. So going into the next call, uh, we have the same, essentially the same, uh, body response, except this time we're adding the after ID for B651. And as you can see, the next 
to, we kind of skipped the first one and now we're going straight into span IO as well as coalition. And again, all these questions, you can defer to your CSM um, or the Crunchbase website for additional information on how to highlight this. Going back into the slide deck. So key changes and reminders. So some things to look out for, the base URL change has now changed from version 3.1 to version 4. Uh, we've now made HTTPS, HTTPS a requirement to recall any of our endpoints. So that is no longer, we can no longer call them via HTTP. And then also we will be deprecating all data that was in the pre prior API. So in prior API versions 3.0 and 3.1, we had some data on products, customers, memberships, members, and videos. Those will no longer show up in the version four uh, going forward. So if you'd like to pull that information, I, I would recommend you know, taking that snapshot now um, because once we move migrate to version four, those will not be in there. Collections endpoint. So collections endpoint is being replaced by our search endpoint. For those who are familiar with the collections endpoint, um, the collections endpoint returned the entire set of the entity types in their core properties. It was limited to 100 items per page um, and it was heavily affected by slow performance with pagination. And there was no real search criteria to filter and limited ways of sorting. Um, we replaced that with the searches endpoint, which functions very similarly to the collections endpoint, but with more functionality. You'll be able to get up to a thousand items per page with equal performance throughout the collection. And you're able to search and sort, um, add searching and searching criteria to the uh, query. Batch endpoint support is now, will now be discontinued. Um, so for those who don't know, batch endpoint was a way to essentially append a bunch of API calls together with the specific relationships and spit out, you know, a response that contained all the various responses for those API calls. Um, we believe that the batch endpoint didn't allow for the full benefits of API v4 to be used. So in order to leverage, you know, batch support, um, we, we expect and hope customers to leverage the search API endpoint to one, retrieve the data fields for multiple items from a collection and two, use the entity lookup endpoint to retrieve relationships information for each entity of interest. Some naming changes will be occurring from the version 3.1 to version four migration. Um, API version four is powered by the same data platform as crunchbase.com. So this benefit also means that the names of entity types, relationships, and fields may be different. Um, in the first example that I covered uh, prior, um, the news and news is now changed to press references. Um, also in the news entity type, we've added category group and event. Um, and then in terms of organization and summary and people summary, those fields have been removed. Um, for the field funding rounds, funding type, we've now changed it to funding rounds, investment type. And that should cover those changes. Coding and links. So optional coding. API users should make sure all fields are coded as optional unless called out as required in the API documentation. This benefits users in two ways. Uh, first one being Crunchbase can add and change data fields without any effect to the user's code. And two, users can more easily stay up to date um, as we make changes. Um, in terms of updating existing links, I've had customers um, reach out to say that some of their links may be broken. Um, so just for best practices during the migration, I would recommend updating any existing links that may be stored in your system so that direct users, so that they can direct users to Crunchbase profile pages. Uh, without updates, the links may appear to be broken. Uh, moving along to migration resources. So as you can see, I've already shared this timeline before, but we just want to reiterate, um, end of life support for version 3.1 will be October 30th. Um, during that time, we hope all customers can migrate um, by the end of January 29th, 2021, as that's when we will sunset the version 3.1 and hopefully all customers will be on version four by then. Um, one thing to note, as I haven't really covered ODM, the ODM plan yet, um, but we are building the ODM plan now. And once the ODM plan is available, users will get their keys and follow the same milestone timelines as shown right here. For additional tools, uh, we have our API update changes. This man manual chronicles all changes in version 4.0. We have our API reference guide. Um, this is part of our data.crunchbase website, which includes examples and instructions on how to query the version 4.0, as well as Swagger Hub, which will reference and identify which data fields can be returned or generated via the requests and responses. 
Um, and then you can also reach out to your CSM if you have any additional very specific questions and your CSM can navigate those questions with you via email. So moving along, I think we now have some time for questions and I'll pass this over to Ariana. Thank you, Charlie, and thanks for walking us through that. Um, as we go through these questions, we'll have a small panel. So I just want to introduce our panelists to all of you listening as well. So not only will our speaker, Charlie Liu, be on, but our lead product manager, Mark Chan, will be sitting in on the panel as well as senior platform engineer, Alex Bolivin. So we've already got a few questions in the queue for those that haven't submitted one yet. Go ahead and put it in the Q&A chat box and we'll get to it um, after the first few that are in there. So to kind of get things started, um, Charlie, a, a question here, if we come across questions during the migration after this webinar, um, where should people, who should people reach out to? Good question. So for any customers, current customers of Crunchbase, feel free to definitely reach out to your CSM. They have been trained and they're knowledgeable of the V4 API. And for anything more technically rated, they can definitely bring in the appropriate resources. So for customers, reach out to your CSMs. Uh, for partners and BD folks, um, please reach out to your Crunchbase point of contact. Again, they have been trained as well. So um, for anyone, just reach out to the Crunchbase point of contact and they should be able to assist going forward. Awesome. Another one here. If we upgraded to v4 for bulk export last year, does this API v4 still apply? Is it different or is it the same? Hey, Anna, I can answer that question. Um, so bulk v4 is actually a different endpoint for if you're using CSV export. Um, if you're relying on API access versus trying to get the data through our bulk export, in, in example, v3, if you're using an endpoint with v3.1 call, you will need to migrate to v4 API. Now, if you're solely, you know, requiring and only using our, our CSV export and you're already using that slash bulk slash v4 call, then you do not need to worry about migrating to our API. But this does mean that you have an option. Um, you know, some of our customers relied on the bulk export CSV export because the V3.1 API didn't do or didn't provide a functionality that they will that, that satisfy the requirement. Some of those requirements is now satisfied with V4 API. So you do have an option of going to using a V4 API. Awesome. Thank you, Mark. Um, another question here for Charlie. How do I know what data fields are searchable and what values might apply to those data fields? Good question. So there's two ways um, I can showcase that. So one way, the most common way is in Swagger Hub. And then we also have some documentation for it in our reference guide. So I'll just show you the reference guide just so you know where it is. Um, so in our data.crunchbase.com uh, reference guide, we have a section that shows uh, clicks on available data. And when you go here, it kind of actually gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to view um, the data fields there. So I'll just mimic this and show you in Swagger Hub. Um, so if you go over here, you're in our get entities call for our lookup on organization. And actually what you want to go down to is the 200 response. So in the 200 response, which I've already shared previously, it, normally it will look like this example value. You'll need to actually click into schema. And then when you click into schema, you'll have all these dot, dot, dots and arrows. You can actually click into these to see the specific fields that you're interested in. So for example, for this one call for organization, for the get organization, these are all the specific fields that can be returned or can be used in the field IDs section of the API call. And then if you were to, let's say, look, use this in a post call, um, these are the possible values that will be returned. Um, so you can search for those or filter on those for anything that's searchable. Awesome. Thanks, Charlie. Um, another question very similar um, for Swagger Hub. How do you see um, or find all of the entities within each collection or the endpoints? Well, 
Yeah, uh, Aaron, I can answer this one as well. Similar to sort of what Charlie and show, Swag Grab is actually all contains sort of all the reference that you ever need to figure out what entities and what endpoints are available. So if you uh, look at this page right now, all the different endpoints for different entities are available. For example, uh, you have organization entity for entity lookup. You have also any lookup endpoint for uh, people and IPO and so forth. So that lists out pretty much all the entities that we provide and within each entity, I think one of the questions uh, from, from Jorge is, you know, for organization, how do I know what fields in there? I think once you drill down into the entity lookup for organization, then again, you go back to this example from Charlie uh, around you going to the schema tab, it will show you all the fields that are available for you to specify in your get call uh, so that you can point that information. And, and this is really a, a, a pattern change from V3 point to V4. Um, if you recall, V3 point will try to give you all the information, all the fields that we have, even though you might not need it. Um, and so this actually makes it a lot more efficient for, for, your, for your calls. Um, and at the same time, it will allow us to add new data points in t and, and continue to improve our API um, without sort of having, you know, requiring our customer to do like a breaking change or, 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 or do a big migration, which we, what we previously had to do going from V3 to V3.1. Awesome, thanks, Mark. Another question I'll direct over your way, Mark. Um, how do we look up an organization by domain name? Yeah, this is something that uh, it, it is actually going to be supported fairly soon. Um, in, in Crunchbase Pro right now, as, as, as you know, uh, Charlie mentioned, the benefit of going to V4 is we're pretty much having the, the pa data parity between our website, www.crunchbase, and some of the pro functionality around search into V4. Um, and currently, we, we don't have a, a way to support domain search on, on our website, our Crunchbase Pro today but we are actively working on developing this feature and it should be available um, in, you know, toward uh, around June timeframe. Um, and, and this is something that we heard feedback from our, our, our beta customers and we, we definitely are, are looking into uh, launching this feature fairly soon so that we could enable you to search against domain. Great, and then another one here, um, just to clarify as, as we are, um, searching um, and kind of in all the data fields, are they case sensitive? Does it, does it matter the case? Yeah, actually uh, for, for the search uh, is not case sensitive. So you could, you know, our, our, our query and string, you could put in anything from capital to lowercase, we'll treat it as case insensitive. Awesome, thank you. Um, another uh, attendee wrote in, where can I find the complete list of field ID? This is, the complete list is gonna be under for particular entity endpoint. Um, and so you know, if you want complete list of all the fields that are available for organization, you will want to go to either the search endpoint for organization or entity lookup endpoint for organization. And then again, go to the uh, example, uh, the schema tab. That will show you all the field that is available for you to um, specify in, in your request. Awesome. And then another question came in, in relative to the CSV. They're curious if there have been similar changes to the CSV. So maybe a little context around that would be helpful, Mark. Yeah. And uh, Mama, uh, let, let me, I, I'm, I'm making an assumption here based on your question. Uh, if there has been similar changes to CSV API. Um, and so we have not changed the API endpoint uh, with the V4 API rollout that has that was actually changed uh, around Q4 of last year when we migrated the endpoint from v3 to v4 for CSV so if you're already using the book CSV right now for uh, getting your export with, with your current endpoint uh, it should be exactly the same 
And if you go to our data.conscious.com uh, documentation under CSV export, that link that you use today should not have changed and it should be still the same as book slash V4. Great, and then as far as API v4 in general, what are the limitations or where can we find limitations that apply? So the limitation is um, steady with uh, v3.1 where depending on your plan, we'll have a rate limit per, per minute. Uh, I think for, for most of our pay planning right now, uh, similar to v3.1, we're, we're also studying in, in around 200 rates per, per minute. Um, and, and the reason why we, we stick with this rate limit right now is, is so that we believe our, our endpoint is a lot more efficient so that you can actually, uh, you won't be hitting as much of our limitation as, as often as you would be with V3.1. Um, so right now, for the most part, the L2 plan or the plan that you guys are on is actually uh, 200 calls per minute. Great, and then is there a number of records per request? Yeah, so there's different default um, number of records that we'll provide per, per request, and it's not by entity type, it's actually by uh, type of endpoint. So if you use, I think Charlie mentioned this, mm -hmm. and this is also in the v4 data.conscious documentation, but if you're using a search, API uh, or default if you're on a pay plan is to give you a thousand requests. Now in the post request um, themselves, uh, you can also specify just like a SQL query uh, on, on a limit parameter. So if you don't want to get a thousand and you just want to get 10 or 15 or, or 20, but you could use the limit parameter to um, you know, limit the amount of uh, records where we come back from the search request. Um, similarly, on the entity lookup, uh, we for individual card, right? Like I think someone mentioned, what is this equivalent relationship in V3.1 to in V4? Card is the same thing as relationship. And so, if you're looking at, let's say, Airbnb, and I want to get all the funding rounds for Airbnb, I will actually use the uh, organization entity lookup endpoint uh, and, and look for Airbnb and then add the funding round cards, which is similar to funding round relationship, and it will list you all the different funding rounds it has. Within a card though, uh, I think Charlie mentioned this in our presentation, it will only show you a max of 100. And so if you need to paginate, then you will need to paginate through the, the card itself. Thanks, Mark. Um, another question here, uh, speaking of cards, are cards where all relational data um, will now be returned? So if we want funding rounds, we should include it as a card in the GET request? That's correct, Sean. Um, card is the same thing as relationship. Um, so if you want, for example, funding round for Airbnb, you will include the funding round card in any lookup. Okay. Um, if you want, uh, the investment for Sycoric Capital, for example, you will look, we will use any lookup for organization, find, use a permalink or UID for Sycoric Capital. And then if you're only interested in the investment and no other fields, then you would just add the investment card, which is the investment relationship um, into that request. This Thanks, Mark. A question here about the API key. Um, this particular attendee has already migrated to V4 bulk API export of CSVs last year, but they received a new API key during this migration. When will the old API key expire? I can answer this one. So this is Charlie here. So if you're just using the CSV, then we can definitely leave that key on for you. Um, we don't need to change your old key and you do not need to use the new key. Um, but this is something you should work out with your CSM. So I would just reach out um, to your CSM and get that sorted out. 
because he or she will have a better answer of how they plan on uh, transitioning your API key. Um, if needed, we can use the old key as well going forward. Great, thanks, Charlie. Um, a question here again about the CSV. Do the CSV data dumps have all the data fields present in the API? Actually, this is one of the nice part about using the V4 API. Um, the CSV themselves that we uh, launched in you know, NFQ4 last year, um, doesn't contain all the fields that we could potentially be adding as well as have in the V4 API. Um, and, and so if you are looking for different fields or fields that um, we, we may have on, on Crunchbase uh, and you don't see on CSV is most likely on the V4 API. Um, and so I would, I would highly encourage you to take a look at V4 API and see what are the fields that you would be interested in and think about whether it makes sense for you to migrate to API. Great, thanks, Mark. Um, a, a question here um, about using Postman. Can you get, can you go step by step on how to create a query using Postman? Sure, yes, I can definitely create an example. So we have a couple ways of doing uh, a call. Um, for example, if we were to just look at autocomplete, um, you can essentially generate, you adding your user key here, um, and then you can just fill in the specific ways, or you could use Swagger Hub and create the pre-generated code and then feed it directly into Postman. Um, is, was there something specific that you wanted to cover in this query? It sounds like it's more general being able to create um, just understanding the steps so that they can um, perhaps create it themselves. Got it. So let's just take a look at a post call. So this is pretty much standard. Um, you'll have your API v4 searches, principles, could be funding rounds, organizations. You have your user key appended to it. The real like heavy lifting part in the API call is really the body of the response. So typically how we structure it um, is the field IDs, the order in the query, and these do not have to be in this particular order, but the way I typically view it as um, the field IDs come first, so what do I want returned? So these are the specific fields that I want returned. How do I want to order the data by? So when I do get my results, how should they be sorted? Um, and obviously in this example, I'm sorting them by the number of exits they had, and I wanted to sort it ascending. And the last part, and this is where you get the most complex, is the different query. So in this query, we're looking at, um, we're trying to arrange multiple investors who have invested in Crunchbase. So I passed the field ID identifier, and I wanted to include only these six specific investors. And I also wanted, for the faucet IDs, I wanted to make sure that we're only looking at the investor profile portion of it. So it, for example, let's say I wanted to, in another example, uh, my query can change. For example, in this query, it's a little bit easier to understand um, in the query section, I have the predicate and then I have the field ID announced on, and I'm only looking at values that are greater than or equal to 2018. So the announced on date is greater than or equal to 2018. And then in my second part of my query, I have the funded organization location, and I'm looking at the operator ID includes, and this operator or this value is actually San Francisco. So this query will return all funding rounds because I have funding rounds at the top that were announced on that are greater than or equal to 20,018 that are located in San Francisco. The funded organization location is in San Francisco. Cool. Awesome, thank you, Charlie. Um, another question here, where can we find detailed descriptions of fields returned by the version four API? If the name of a certain field is, oh, in order to clarify what the field contains. Um, and so maybe Mark, um, if you could kind of dig in deeper to identifying what the 
field contains and in, in, um, kind of the description of those fields, that would be great. Yeah, certainly can. And so I think um, the, the, the group way of you know, understanding what is the description and, and also what's going to contain is, uh, again, go, going to this schema page and, um, you know, under each of these fields, we actually provide the description that we have on our crunchbase.com as well. So for example, um, you were talking about, you know, a great example is funding stage. Let's go to that one, Charlie, since you're navigating. Um, it gives you a quick description of this field, describe an organization most recent funding status. And then if it's a, it also provides you information around what field type. And if it's an enum, um, then this is where we also list out the possible values. So for funding stage, um, we, you know, there's actually a six preset value that it could be. And we also provide this information because this is very useful information for you to understand when you're doing a search. So now by understanding the funding stage and what possible value, I can actually go to the search endpoint for organization, um, maybe, you know, do a search for any organization that have a funding stage of early stage venture and IPO. And I can actually specify that API uh, uh, value uh, or, or yeah, that in, in the call so that I could get that information. For things that are string, we don't provide any example today, but I think in order to get a simple idea of, you know, besides the description, what is actually underlying data, what we usually do and what I do as well is uh, using Swagger Hub or Postman or however you want to access the data and, and use search or use entity lookup um, to just quickly pull up an example so that you, you could generate, uh, you, know, uh, you know, search, you could say, hey, give me 10 records, give me the fun total feel, and you could get a sense of what are the different uh, field values for string that we have. But because they're string, they're not enums, right? There's not gonna be any set, um, you know, pre-default value that we have for those particular type of fields. Uh, one other thing I would point out is, you know, people talked about how do I get a understanding of a list of fields. Uh, we talked about going to the schema under each endpoint. There's also another path, uh, Charlie, if you go all the way to the bottom of, of this Swagger doc, right, after all the endpoints that were listed, you'll see there's these schema here. Uh, each of these are objects. So if you, so this is actually where we're pulling that information up top. So you could probably find organization entity if you keep scrolling down. Right, organization. Is this? Mm -hmm. it's toward the bottom. There you go. This is also another path for you mm -hmm. to get all the understand what object or entity we have, and then what are the fields and cards that are available for each entity type. So this is another path for you to understand what the data that you could pull or request for. Awesome. Um, next question. Let's see here. Um, it, this one might be for, for you, Alex. The way CARDS is implemented is similar to GraphQL, and this particular attendee is currently using GraphQL to process data. Is it possible to use GraphQL clients to process data as objects? Hi, this is Alex. Um, well, yes, we at this time we do not expose publicly our GraphQL API. So this V4 API kind of mimics it. So um, we still need to use REST and GraphQL is not available at this time. So, but we might be looking into this in the future and uh, if we have enough um, requests, we'll consider that. Awesome. Thanks, Alex. This one's probably for you, Mark. Um, is there a quick way to know the list of companies that were updated today, for example? That way, this particular attendee can do a single CSV export once and, and do delta, delta updates using the API, the API on a daily basis. Yeah, this is a very good use case for the search API. Um, so for this particular um, things that you're trying to do, I would suggest going to the search API for organization. 
um, and then using the sort uh, on the field ID of created at or updated at. Um, uh, that's one way so that you could, you could get a list of, of things that pretty much uh, in chronological order. If you want to limit the amount of data coming back or only get information that is, you know, let's say today or this week, you could also put in using created at or updated at field in the search query themselves. Um, and in, in, the, in the date operator, we actually support, uh, you know, after or before equal to that date. Um, and so, you know, you could definitely look for only companies that are updated today, only companies that are updated in the past week, or only companies that are created in the past week. Like these are some examples of you know, using query on updated and then created that. Wonderful, thanks Mark. And this looks like it might be our last question. Um, it's, it's in addition to a question asked before, but um, how would someone go about finding the specific value IDs to search for in each field? For example, how would they know the long value ID um, of San Francisco? Yeah, so there's a couple of ways of doing this. Um, the, the one way is using the autocomplete. Um, endpoint and specify on, let's say, so you're interested in San Francisco, my assumption is you're looking for location. So you could use autocomplete and actually specify the collection ID to only for location. And at that point, um, you could actually search for San Francisco and it will re return the, the permalink or UID for the particular, um, particular uh, you know, location that you can, thank you, Charlie, for doing this <laughs> live. Um, and so, for example, if you search for San Francisco, the first one that came up is uh, the city of San Francisco and the UID for San Francisco is you could paste that in into your search query or you could also paste in a permalink. You could do the same thing for category or category group. Um, another path is, uh, and I think we'll, we'll have some more uh, training document, reference document to share. You could, you know, as I mentioned, this search for challenge, this API is actually the same thing that powers our Crunchbase Pro search. So you could also look at, you know, generate your country's pro search using a UI, and then take a look at the, um, the actual requests in the network tab of your, of your browser. Um, and we, ha we have a demonstration of that in a video. Um, and you could actually look at what permalink or your UID we're using and then just copy paste it into um, your, your API query. Wonderful, thanks Mark. And this will be our last question. Um, I'll pop it over to you, Alex. Is there a way to find delete companies or other data points? Um, yes, so for that we do have specific endpoint. It's deleted entities. So there you can find all the entities that were deleted from our platform from Crunchbase. And for this, you may want to sort of check it once in a while to see if there is something that was deleted. And here you can search if you're looking for companies or people or other entities, and you can add uh, some basic queries. But basically we do return here just uh, entity definition ID, like a category, it's organization or person or activity or press reference, and then it's a unique identifier. So this endpoint basically returns you a list of unique identifiers of entities which were deleted from our system. Great, thank you, Alex. Um, so that concludes the webinar. It looks like we're coming up on time. So if any of your questions were not answered, we will follow up with you. For the rest of you, all, all people who attended, even if you had to hop off, all registrants, they will receive a recording of this webinar as well as the slides to review. Um, and that will be going out in about 24 hours, so keep an eye on your inbox for that. And with that, um, thank you all for joining us and take care. <laughs>